hello there and welcome to this introductory video on how to use your iPad. I'm going to be going over some of the basics and some of the most commonly asked questions that we get here at GTI Spindle about just basic operational things with your iPad. Let's start out with the physical attributes of the iPad itself. There are several buttons on the iPad. The most used button that you'll probably encounter is this little button on the front. This is known as the home button. So it's right here when you click this, the screen will turn on. And that's a button that you'll use to get out of applications and several other things that we'll get to later. The other button that you'll use very frequently is up in this top right corner. It's called the sleep button. When you click this, the screen will turn off or on and as we get to the end, it's also a button you'll use to turn off your iPad. There's also on the side here, this volume rocker that lets you turn up and down your volume. There is hidden behind this little uh, thing here, the side switch. This ships with the mute functionality, but in the settings application, you can change the side switch to enable rotation lock so the screen stays in one place. So those are some of the main buttons on here. There are two cameras on every iPad. The back camera, also known as the EyeSight camera, and there's this front camera known as the FaceTime camera. There's also a microphone, which is up here in the top middle. That's where, why that hole is cut out there. And there's also, of course, your connector for lightning or the 30-pin connector down there. So that is just the physical attributes of the device itself. Now, let's dig into some of the software, the operating system software, and some of the just basic interface tips and tricks. The first thing to note about using your iPad is it doesn't matter how hard you press against it. It will register a light touch and a hard touch the same. So my advice would be lightly touch against the screen when you're tapping on it instead of trying to break your finger off, uh, as they will register the same. It simply registers if you're touching the screen or if you're not. So that's the first thing to know about using your iPad. Next up, I just want to show you some different gestures that will make your life easier when using the iPad. So let's get the screen turned on. Let's slide to unlock. And the first gesture is, these are all four or five finger gestures. Uh, I tend to use four. If you slide your fingers with four fingers up on the screen, that gets you into the multitasking bar. And this is also enabled by double clicking the home button. And this is where you're able to close out of previously used apps or jump back to an app you recently used. If you slide over, with one finger, you can slide over, you'll have this other area of the multitasking bar that has the rotation lock, brightness controls, and some other things there as well, including volume. So if you just tap up there, that will get out of that. There is also the ability to, uh, to close out of your application by a gesture. So you can use your home button to get to the home screen. You can also use four or five fingers and just pinch down on the screen. That will enable you to get in and out of applications. You can also jump between your most commonly, but between your apps you recently used with the gesture. So four or five fingers to the left or right will get you between your apps. So you can quickly jump in between which applications you were using, using a gesture. So that, those are just the three gestures that are enabled on your iPad that may make your life a little bit easier getting around. Next up, I want to talk about the tap and hold metaphor or command. There is this whole world in the iPad around tap and hold. The first thing you'll note is if you tap and hold on an application icon on the main screen, is they will start to jiggle. This now lets you manipulate your apps. You're able to move them around, so you're able to move by just simply tapping and holding on an app, and you're able to move them. And if you put one app on top of another, you're able to create folders. So if you want to group your applications by folders, that's how you do that. Uh, tap and hold also works down in that multitasking bar I showed earlier. When you're down there, if you tap and hold on an app icon, you'll see this little red mark. 
in the kind of a delete mark. If you click that, you'll close out of your previously opened applications. Very useful there to clear all the memory and system resources towards whatever app you're trying to use. If you tap, if you do that on the main screen, you'll you can actually uninstall applications that way. So if you accidentally do that, uh, I'll get back on to how to re-download those in a little bit here. So those are some basic tap and hold commands. There are some others to, to note. If you are in an email or manipulating text in some way, you can tap and hold to start selecting text to cut, copy, and paste that text and do things there. You can also, on the keyboard itself, tap and hold on a key, and that will enable a pop-up of some different characters. So if you're trying to type in accents and different things there, you're able to by tapping and holding on a key. This is something you may not use every day, but something helpful to, to, to just know. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about the battery. The battery on the iPad is great. It, it can last 10 hours, 15 hours. It really depends what you're doing and how you're using your iPad. So I'll, first I want to talk about conserving its battery life you will traditionally get between six and nine hours out of use when you're using it with your analyzer setup. So how do you conserve that battery and make it last the longest? The first area is the screen. The screen is of utmost importance. That is going to be the single most important factor as far as how long that battery will last. The more the screen is turned off, the longer your battery will last. The lower the brightness is, the longer your battery life will last as well. So the first tip is simply have your screen turned off when you're not using your iPad. It seems like a simple one, but a lot of people overlook that very important, uh, very important aspect of battery life. So to turn your screen on or off, is it simply touch this sleep button in the top right that I showed you earlier. So that will enable you to turn on or off your screen like that. So that's first step. Uh, the second tip is brightness. Having a lower brightness will give you longer battery life. Obviously, you may need higher brightness depending on your situation because you need to be able to see what you're looking at. So uh, brightness can, can, be, can be trolled through the multitasking bar that I showed you earlier and also in the settings application that we will get to in a little bit. The last point about conserving battery life is radios. Your iPad has Wi-Fi and many of them have LTE or 3G and all of them have Bluetooth. Turning the ones you don't need on off will conserve your battery life. So turn Bluetooth off, turn Wi-Fi off if you're not using it, and even turn your cellular data connection off if you don't need access to it. That is all done through the settings application at very in your face at the very top uh, left there as you open the application. Next up as far as battery life, I want to talk about just simply charging your iPad. So there are several chargers out there that you can use with your iPad. Some are better than others. Many of you have iPhone chargers. iPhone chargers are not as powerful. Those are five watts worth of juice versus an iPad charger, which is 10 or 12 watts. So make sure you're using the one that's shipped with your iPad or even go out to the Apple store and pick up the $29 iPad power adapter, which the new ones that they just started making with the fourth generation iPad are 12 watt adapters. So that might be a beneficial thing to pick up. It will charge your iPad much faster than some of the other chargers out there. Also to note, if you're charging with your computer, that will also charge it at much lower speeds than an iPad charger would. It's also helpful, you can pick up a car charger at the Apple store. That's another way to charge your iPad while you're out on the road and have spare time as you're driving. So those are just some tips as to charging your iPad. Make sure you're actually using an iPad adapter. Next up, I wanna talk about screenshots. How do you take them? How do you share them? So screenshots enable you to basically take a picture of what you're looking at on your iPad. And it's pretty simple to take a screenshot. When you're in your iPad, you have the home button and the sleep button. You'll simply hold down the home button and snap the sleep button to take a screenshot. So it's pretty 
simple to do, and a lot of people accidentally do it as well. So once again, hold down the home button, then right after that, snap the sleep button. That enables you to take a screenshot, the screen will flash white when you do this, and that is what you do to take a screenshot. It's kind of similar to how uh, you get ready for a, a photo, that's by clicking this home button, and then when you want to take it, you just snap that, that uh, sleep button and that will enable that screenshot to go through. So the sleep button acts as a trigger of, of source for this functionality. Now let's show you how to actually share the screenshots. All screenshots when they're taken get dumped into the Photos app, which is on the main screen of your iPad. It's the third app on the top, and once you get into that, you'll see this area called Camera Roll. And many people, it'll just be called Photos. So Photos is where it's at, and you'll see a list of photos, and then you'll want to share these photos. You may want to share these with us, with other people. To do this, you can do it one at a time or do it all at once. To do it all at once, you'll want to hit the edit button on the top right corner, and then you'll be able to select a bunch of photos. So select the ones you want. I'm going to select these three. You'll see check marks come up as you select them. And when you and if you want to share them, just hit the button share in the top left. This uh, this also enables you to delete these photos that you want as well. So if you hit share, you'll have the option of mail, message, photo stream, Facebook, and some other ones there. You want to hit mail, and that will pop up these uh, photos into a new mail message. Just simply hit your recipient, a subject header, and hit send. It's that simple. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about the App Store. Um, more specifically, how do you update your apps and how do you re-download past purchases? So let's first jump into the App Store. It's on the bottom of your screen, uh, and here it is. So here's the App Store. Another way to find it if it's kind of lost is the search functionality. If you go past your apps to the left one screen, you have this search, and you're able to search for apps, and search through Google, things like that. So if you use the search, that's another way to find the App Store. So if I click on App Store, you've got these different tabs on the bottom of that screen. To the most right is the Update tab. If you click that, you'll have all the updates available. And you're able to click Update right there to update the app. You're able to hit Update All if there's multiple. And it should not ask you for your password at this stage and it is fairly simple to update your applications uh, by just simply doing that. So that's that. Uh, right next to that is the Purchase tab. At that tab, you'll see all these different apps that you have bought, and this lets you re-download those apps free of charge. Now the really cool thing is, if you accidentally delete an app, you can do this. If you buy a brand new iPad, you can do this as well. So say you destroy your iPad, gets thrown in a lake or something, you need to re-download these apps. If you log in with your credentials, you can re-download these free of charge. You can also load up those applications on as many iPads as you want, as long as you do it through the App Store on your iPad. You can buy thousands of iPads and have that same purchase be used on all of your devices. So it's a really awesome thing that you're able to do that with the App Store, and that's just a little tip on using the, the App Store. So I hope those come in handy. Next up, I want to talk about the Settings application. The Settings app allows you to, as it says, uh, look at different settings. And there's some useful information in here as well. So the Settings app is, a, the first and foremost, allows you to turn Wi-Fi on and off, Bluetooth on and off, cellular data on and off. That's at the very top of the Settings app. Uh, right below that is the general area, and this is going to be a useful area for you. Uh, there's this About tab you're able to go into, and it'll display information about your iPad. Its serial number, its capacity, uh, its cellular data number, all sorts of uh, statistics that you may need access to at some point. That's where you'll find it. Also in the General tab is this Software Update button. This will allow you to, over the air, update iOS, the operating system. So if there is an operating system update come, comes out, say iOS 7 comes out, 
you'll be able to update to that right on your iPad over the air. Now, make sure our apps are up to date for the new software. Most of the time they are, but after you've got the AOK -OK from us, that's how you update the operating system. Also in the About tab is Usage. This will go app by app, show you which apps are using your uh, capacity on your iPad. If you're running out of room on your iPad, this is where you'll be able to delete some of that data. So lots more to dig into the Settings app. Those are some of the things I think you'll find most useful. The last tip today I want to share with you is simply how to turn on or off your iPad. As I mentioned earlier, the sleep button is a useful button. This button allows you to turn the screen on or off, but also if you tap and hold that button, you'll be greeted with this slide to power off interface. So if you tap and hold that button for a few seconds, you'll be able to slide to power off your iPad. When you do that, your iPad will power off in a few seconds, and during that, once it's powered off, no battery life will be used whatsoever. And when you want to turn your iPad back on, simply tap and hold that sleep button for a few seconds. You'll be greeted with the Apple logo, and then your iPad will be.